Welcome to the Quick Pro Camera Guide for the Canon 5D Mark III. This is a great camera that will capture amazing images as well as HD video. We hope you'll enjoy learning more about it with this guide. This guide is meant to be a study tool to be used in connection with and not a replacement of your camera's owner's manual. You can watch it entirely in one sitting or by chapter. The functions and features of the 5D Mark III that we cover are designed to give you a solid working knowledge of your camera. It's really not possible to cover every configuration on your camera, but we will provide you a very solid foundation to build your digital photography skills on. With this new information, you'll be able to improve your ability to capture great pictures in a variety of shooting settings. The 5D Mark III has an impressive 22 megapixel full frame image sensor, a large 3.2 inch LCD, a 61 point autofocus system, and many other great features and functions that we'll discuss in this guide. Let's get started. Your 5D Mark III has many sophisticated buttons and dials to take the best pictures with your camera. You'll want to be familiar with the functions of each of them. Let's begin by taking a closer look at many of the camera's features. First, let's take a look at the top of the camera. First, there is the power switch and the mode dial. In the center of the mode dial, there is the lock release. To change the shooting mode, press and hold this lock release while rotating the mode dial. Next, we'll find the hot shoe, where you can attach a variety of external flash units. This is the LCD panel, where you can access and control many of the shooting settings. Above the LCD panel, there are four buttons. First, there is the white balance metering button. To select the white balance setting, press the button and then rotate the quick control dial while watching the LCD panel. To change the metering mode, press the button and then rotate the main dial. The next button is the AF drive button, which will allow you to select the camera's autofocus mode and drive mode in conjunction with the main dial and quick control dial. The next button is the ISO flash compensation button, which will allow you to select the ISO setting as well as the flash exposure compensation. After the button has been pressed, use the main dial to select the ISO and the quick control dial to select the flash exposure compensation. The last button is the LCD panel illumination button. You can use this button in dimly lit conditions to make it easier to see the information that is displayed on the LCD panel. As we've discussed, this is the main dial. It is used to control the shutter speed in shutter priority and manual modes. It's also used in conjunction with a variety of other buttons to control camera settings. This is the multi-function button. Using this button, you can set the AF area selection mode. You can also assign a variety of custom controls to the multi-function button. And this is the shutter button. To take a picture, simply press this button halfway down to allow the camera to focus, and then press it the rest of the way to take the picture. Now let's take a look at this side of the camera. Here we'll find the card slot cover. Your camera can use both SD and compact flash memory cards. When you're inserting a memory card, you'll want to make sure that the manufacturer's logo is facing the back of the camera. Simply insert the card until it clicks into place and close the card slot cover. To remove a compact flash memory card, press the small gray lever and the card will eject. To remove an SD memory card, simply press the card and it will eject. Before you start taking pictures with a new memory card, it's a good idea to format it. Also keep in mind that your camera will operate faster if you periodically format your memory card rather than simply deleting images from it to free up space for more picture taking. Make sure that you don't reformat your card unless you have already copied the images that you want to save to your computer. Formatting your memory card will erase all the images. To format a memory card, press the menu button and use the camera's multi-controller to navigate to the first setup menu tab indicated by a wrench icon with the first dot highlighted. Navigate to the Format Card option and press Set. Here you'll need to select the card you'd like to format and press Set. Select OK and press Set again. This is the remote control sensor, which allows an optional remote control to communicate with the camera. This is the self-timer lamp. When the self-timer is used, the self-timer lamp will illuminate when the self-timer is used. This is the depth of field preview button. You can press and hold this button while looking through the viewfinder to see the effects of the aperture setting on the final image. 
On this side of the camera, you'll find the terminal cover, where you can connect the camera to other devices. Here you'll find the headphone terminal, the AV out digital terminal, which can be used to connect the camera to a non-HD TV, and this is the HDMI terminal, which will allow you to connect the camera to an HD television. This is the microphone terminal, which will allow you to use an external microphone during movie recording, and this is the PC terminal. The PC terminal will allow you to connect an external flash unit using a sync cord. Finally, this is the remote control terminal, which is for use with an optional remote control. Also on this side of the camera, there is the lens release button. To attach a lens, make sure that the camera is switched to off, hold the camera in one hand with the lens in the other, like this, align the lens's index with the camera's index, then gently rotate the lens until it clicks into place. Take great care not to scratch the lens by allowing it to make contact with anything. When you want to detach a lens, press the lens release button while holding the camera with the same hand and then with the other hand, rotate the lens until it uncouples. Avoid changing lenses in windy or dusty conditions. This will help the image sensor stay clean and free of dust. Now let's take a look at the back of the camera. The most important feature is the large 3.2 inch LCD monitor. This monitor serves several purposes. First, it displays images that have been taken. Using the camera's quick control dial, you can scroll through the images on the memory card. Second, when the quick control button is pressed, the LCD monitor provides fast and easy access to several of the camera's settings in the quick control screen. Third, when the menu button is pressed, the LCD monitor displays the camera's menu system, where you can change many important settings in the camera. Finally, when the start-stop button is pressed, the LCD monitor provides a live view of the scene. Directly above the LCD monitor is the viewfinder, where you can see the camera settings when you're taking pictures. Before you start taking pictures, you'll want to focus the viewfinder. To do this, use the diopter adjustment knob located to the right of the eye cup. Simply rotate the knob until the automatic focus points in the viewfinder are in sharp focus. At the bottom of the viewfinder, you can see the battery check, the shutter speed, aperture, exposure level indicator, the ISO setting, the maximum burst, and the focus confirmation light. Over the scene, you will see the camera's focus points and the spot metering circle. This is the menu button. Pressing this button will allow you to access the camera's sophisticated menu system. This is the info button. In the camera's shooting, playback, and live view modes, pressing this button will display helpful information. We'll discuss more about the camera's display settings later in this guide. This button has three functions. First, it is the creative photo button. In the camera shooting modes, pressing this button will provide fast access to the picture styles, multiple exposure settings, and HDR setting. In playback mode, you can press this button to display a comparative playback, which will allow you to view two images side by side. This button also serves as the direct print button. When the camera is connected to a compatible printer, you can use this button to print images directly from the camera's memory card. This is the rating button. Using this button, you can assign star ratings to your images in camera. This is a great way to keep note of which images are your favorites while you're shooting. This is the index magnify reduce button, which is used in the camera's playback mode. Using this button in conjunction with other camera buttons and dials, You'll be able to view your images as thumbnails, and you'll be able to zoom in on detail areas of the image to check focus. This is the playback button. Pressing this button will allow you to view your images on the LCD monitor. This button is the erase button, which will allow you to erase images from the memory card in playback mode. This is the live view movie shooting switch which allows you to select whether you'd like to use live view to shoot still images or record movies. This is the start stop button. When the live view movie shooting switch is set to movie, the start stop button can be pressed to start and end movie recording. When the switch is set to live view shooting, the button can be pressed to enter and exit the live view shooting. This is the AF on button. Just as pressing the shutter button halfway down, you can press and hold this button to use autofocus. This is the AE lock button. 
When the shutter button is pressed and held halfway down, you can press the AE lock button to lock the exposure while you recompose the image. This is the AF point selection button. Pressing this button will allow you to select the AF point you'd like to use. As we've discussed, this is the multi-controller, which allows you to access a variety of camera controls and functions. This is the quick control button. Pressing this button will activate the quick control screen. Here you can use the multi-controller and quick control dial to adjust a variety of camera settings. This is the quick control dial. As we've discussed, this dial can be used to access and adjust a variety of camera settings. This is the setting button, which is used to confirm settings and menu selections. This is the access lamp. When illuminated, this lamp indicates that the memory card is being read or written to. Do not remove the memory card while this lamp is lit. This is the multifunction lock switch. When it's set to lock, the main dial, quick control dial, and multi-controller will be locked from making changes inadvertently. Your 5D Mark III has a variety of image quality settings that will allow you to capture images with resolution, file format, and compression that you need for your scenario. Let's take a moment to discuss the camera's image quality options. Your Canon 5D Mark III can record image files in two different image quality settings, or file types, RAW and JPEG. First, there is the RAW setting. RAW files are not actually image files. They are actually the raw data saved to the memory card directly from the image sensor. This means that raw must be processed on the computer before they're printed. Next, raw file sizes are considerably larger than JPEG files. Raw files have a much broader range of tones. Shadow and highlight areas have more detail than other image files, and you can extensively edit raw files without losing image data. The other image quality setting on the 5D Mark III is JPEG. JPEG files are a standard compressed file format that is supported by any image software. Because JPEG files are compressed, the file sizes are very small compared to RAW or TIFF image files, but they also have a much narrower range of tones and will lose some image data each time they're saved. Let's take a look at how to select the image quality settings on the 5D Mark III. The image quality options are accessed in the camera's menu system under the first shooting tab. Here you can use the main dial to select the raw quality setting and the quick control dial to select the JPEG quality setting. There are three different raw options, raw, medium raw, and small raw. The difference between the different raw options is the resolution. The first raw option will use all 22 megapixels to record images. The medium raw option will use 10 megapixels and the small raw option will use 5.5 megapixels. Below the RAW options, there are the JPEG options. You'll notice that for each of the large, medium, and small quality settings, there are several settings. This icon represents the fine quality JPEG setting, which is a higher quality with less compression. This icon represents a normal quality JPEG with more compression. Both formats will use the same number of megapixels to record the image. The only difference is the compression of the file. For the small JPEG settings, there are also S2 and S3 options. The S2 setting is good for playing the images on a digital photo frame, and the S3 setting is good for email or posting the images online. The camera will record whichever combination of RAW and JPEG files you have selected. So if you select medium RAW for the RAW setting and large normal quality for the JPEG setting, the camera will record one 10 megapixel RAW file as well as one normal quality large JPEG file each time a picture is taken. If you select the dash for either setting, the camera will not record an image in that file format. However, if both the RAW and JPEG settings are set to the dash, the camera will record one large 22 megapixel RAW file as well as one large fine quality JPEG file each time a picture is taken. One of the most important concepts in photography is exposure, or the amount of light that falls on the camera's image sensor or film. A properly exposed photo will have good detail in the shadow, mid-tone, and highlight areas. Photos that are too bright are overexposed, and photos that are too dark are said to be underexposed. 
There are four ways that your 5D Mark III measures light. These are the camera's metering modes. To select a metering mode, press the metering mode button. Then rotate the main dial. The first metering mode is called evaluative metering. This is a great general use metering mode that can be used in most shooting scenarios. The camera sets the exposure automatically to suit the scene. This is a good mode to use for many situations, but sometimes when the scene is very bright or very dark, you may want to use a different metering mode. The next metering mode is partial metering. This is a good mode to choose when the background is much brighter than the subject. Partial metering covers about 6.2% of the viewfinder area at the center. The next metering mode is spot metering. Spot metering is very similar to partial metering, except that it covers a much smaller area of the frame. Spot metering uses about 1.5% of the viewfinder area in the center. This is a good mode to choose if you want to meter from only a very specific area of the frame. The last metering mode is center weighted metering. This is a classic metering mode to use for portraits. Center weighted metering will evaluate the entire frame and assign the greatest weight to the center area. Now that you know a little about how your camera sees and measures light to create properly exposed photos, let's talk a little about the shooting modes on your 5D Mark III. Your camera's shooting modes allow you to take creative control over the camera's settings like aperture, shutter speed, ISO, white balance, flash, as well as a variety of other settings. To select a shooting mode, press and hold the mode dial lock release button and then rotate the mode dial. The first mode is Scene Intelligent Auto and is indicated with a green A plus icon on the mode dial. In this mode, the camera will do all of the work for you. All you need to do is point and shoot. The next mode is called Program AE and is represented with a P on the mode dial. In this mode, the camera automatically adjusts the shutter speed and aperture for optimal exposure but you can change the aperture and shutter speed combinations to suit your needs. To operate in this mode, press and hold the lock release and rotate the mode dial to select P. Press the shutter button halfway down to activate the viewfinder so you can monitor the aperture and exposure settings. Press and hold the AF on button or shutter release button halfway down to focus, then press the shutter release button all the way down to take the picture. You may find that the shutter speed is too slow for what you're photographing or that the aperture does not give you the depth of field that you're looking for. If you'd like to change the camera shutter speed and aperture combination, simply rotate the main dial. Rotate the main dial to the right for large aperture openings and fast shutter speeds and rotate the main dial to the left for small aperture openings and slow shutter speeds. The next shooting mode is the TV or shutter priority mode. The shutter priority mode is useful for times when you want to control motion in a scene, whether it's freezing action or blurring the motion of a subject. In this mode, you'll set the shutter speed and the camera will automatically select an appropriate aperture value for proper exposure. To use the camera in shutter priority mode, select TV using the lock release and the mode dial. Press the shutter button down halfway to activate the viewfinder and rotate the main dial to set the shutter speed. The Canon 5D Mark III has shutter speeds that range from very slow, 30 full seconds, to very fast, 1 8,000th of a second. You can view the shutter speed and aperture values on the LCD panel, through the camera's viewfinder, or on the quick control screen. The next shooting mode is the AV, or Aperture Priority Mode. The Aperture Priority Mode is useful for times when you want to control the depth of field in an image. Depth of field is the term used to describe the distance between the nearest and farthest objects in a scene that appear acceptably sharp in an image. When only a small area or subject in an image is in focus, it's said to have a shallow depth of field. This effect is achieved by using a smaller f-stop number. When everything in both the foreground and background is in focus, an image is said to have a long depth of field. For a long depth of field, choose a large f-stop number. When you're shooting in aperture priority mode, you'll set the aperture and the camera will automatically select the correct shutter speed for proper exposure. To use this mode, select AV on the mode dial. Again, press the shutter button halfway to activate the viewfinder and rotate the main dial to select an aperture value as you watch the display on the LCD panel or through the viewfinder. Once you have made your selection, press the AF on button or the shutter button halfway to focus and press the shutter button to take the picture. The next shooting mode is manual mode. This gives you complete control of the camera. In manual mode, you will set the shutter speed and aperture to create the exposure. 
To operate the camera in manual mode, select M on the mode dial. To set the shutter speed, rotate the main dial. To set the aperture, rotate the quick control dial. Press the shutter button halfway so that as you're making adjustments to the aperture and shutter speed, you can watch the exposure scale either on the LCD panel or through the viewfinder. When the exposure level indicator is near the center of the scale, the image should be properly exposed. You can choose just the right aperture and shutter speed combination for your scene, whether you want to freeze action or create a very shallow depth of field. Make the necessary adjustments to the aperture and shutter speed and press the AF on or shutter release button halfway down to focus and press the shutter release button to take the picture. The next shooting mode is bulb. This is a great mode to use for night scenes, fireworks and other subjects that need very long exposures. In this mode, the shutter will stay open for as long as the shutter button is held down. To operate the camera in bulb mode, rotate the mode dial to B. To set the aperture, you can rotate the main dial or the quick control dial. Press the AF on button or the shutter button halfway down to focus and then press and hold the shutter button to take the picture. The next three modes on the mode dial are C1, C2 and C3. These are the camera's custom shooting modes where you can register camera settings so they can be quickly and easily recalled simply by setting the mode dial to that custom shooting mode. To register settings to one of these modes, you'll first want to make adjustments to all of the settings that you'd like to be registered. You can register the shooting mode and exposure settings as well as focus settings, metering mode, drive mode, and exposure and flash compensation. Let's make adjustments to several of these settings and register a custom shooting mode now. We'll select manual for the shooting mode and we'll select the aperture and shutter speed. We'll change the ISO and we'll set the focus settings. Note that even the AF point can be registered to the custom shooting mode. Now that we've made our selections, we can register these settings to one of the custom shooting modes. To do this, we'll enter the camera's menu system and navigate to the fourth setup tab. Here, we'll select custom shooting mode and register settings. Now we can select the custom shooting mode we like and select OK when prompted. Now when the custom shooting mode that we registered is selected on the mode dial, all of the registered settings will be instantly recalled. In addition to aperture and shutter speed, the camera's ISO setting will have a significant impact on whether your images are properly exposed. The ISO sets the image sensor's sensitivity to light. The higher the number, the less light that is required to properly expose the image sensor. You can either have the camera automatically choose the sensitivity or you can set it manually. To set the ISO on the 5D Mark III, press the ISO button, then set the ISO by rotating the main dial while watching the LCD panel. You can select ISO Auto, indicated by an A, and you can choose from a range of ISOs ranging from 100 to 25,600. The other way to set the ISO on the 5D Mark III is in the Quick Control screen. Press the Quick Control button and use the multi-controller to navigate to the ISO option. Now you can use the Quick Control dial to select the ISO setting. When the camera is set to use ISO Auto, it will automatically select an appropriate ISO setting. But the great thing about the Auto ISO on the 5D Mark III is that it works in conjunction with a selected minimum shutter speed that you can set according to your scenario. The Auto ISO options are accessed in the second shooting menu under ISO Speed Settings. Here you can simply select the ISO setting and you can set the ISO speed range. You can set the minimum and the maximum that you'd like the camera to allow to be selected. This is also where you can set the camera to allow an expanded ISO setting, such as low for the minimum and high settings for the maximum. Once you have made your selection, select OK and press Set. This menu is also where you can set the controls for the auto ISO options. First, you can set the auto ISO range. Again, you can select your minimum and maximum settings that you'd like the camera to use. Now you can set the minimum shutter speed. You can select auto or you can choose any other shutter speed you'd like. This setting will set the slowest shutter speed that the camera will use. If the shutter speed drops to slower than what you have selected here, the camera will increase the ISO to keep the shutter speed at the minimum that you've selected. It's a good idea to set the ISO speed to suit the ambient light setting that you're shooting in. 
When you increase the ISO speed to a higher number for low light, a faster shutter speed can be used to avoid blurry images. The full frame image sensor on your camera is very powerful. It will allow you to use very high ISO settings and still have great images. Keep in mind, however, that some very high ISO settings will introduce digital noise or grain into your images. You'll want to experiment with the camera's ISO settings to become familiar with their range and control. Here is a guide that will help you have a basic idea of what ISO setting to use in various situations. When you're outdoors in full sun, use ISO 100 to 200. In the shade on an overcast day or indoors with lots of window light, use ISO 400. ISOs 800 and higher should be used indoors for action shots or in other low light conditions. Now that we've discussed shooting modes and ISO settings, let's take a minute to talk about the camera's drive modes. The drive modes determine how many times the shutter releases when you press the shutter button. The 5D Mark III has single shooting, high speed continuous shooting, low speed continuous shooting, silent single shooting, silent continuous shooting, 10 second self timer remote control, and 2 second self timer remote control. To set the drive mode, simply press the drive mode button and then rotate the quick control dial while watching the LCD panel. In single shooting drive mode, one picture will be taken when you press the shutter button completely. This is a good mode for stationary subjects. The high speed continuous shooting drive mode will record up to six frames per second while the shutter button is pressed down completely. The low speed continuous shooting drive mode will record up to three frames per second while the shutter button is pressed down completely. The silent shooting drive mode is like the single shooting drive mode except that the shutter is much quieter than in the single shooting mode. This is a great mode to use when you don't want to disrupt quiet surroundings. The silent continuous shooting drive mode is like the low speed continuous shooting drive mode, but the shutter is again much quieter, making it more appropriate for use in quiet surroundings. The 10 second and 2 second self timer modes take the picture 10 or 2 seconds after the shutter button is pressed completely. Use this mode for self portraits or with a tripod to reduce camera shake at very slow shutter speeds. These are also the drive modes that you'll want to select if you're using an optional remote control. The Canon 5D Mark III has two great features that you can use to capture great photos and amazing HD video. Let's discuss the camera's live view and movie modes. To shoot in live view, make sure the live view movie shooting switch is set to live view. Then press the start stop button. Please note that it is important to avoid directing the camera's lens toward the sun in live view and movie modes as this can seriously damage the camera's internal components. Next you'll need to choose the camera's AF mode. In live view there are three different AF modes to choose from. Live mode, live mode with face detection, and quick mode. In live mode the camera uses the image sensor to focus which takes a bit longer than quick mode. To choose the AF mode in live view, enter the camera's menu system and navigate to the fourth shooting tab. This is where the live view functions are located. Under AF mode, you can select live mode, live mode with face detection, or quick mode. In live mode, you can use the multi-controller to move the focus point to the desired area of the frame. The subject that is within the focus point will be in focus. Press the shutter button halfway down to focus. When focus is achieved, the focus point will turn green and a beep will sound. If focus cannot be achieved, the focus point will turn orange. The second AF mode is live mode with face detection. This mode functions in the same way that live mode functions, except that human faces are detected and focused. If there are no faces in the frame, the standard live mode focus point will be shown. When the camera detects a face, the face detection focus point will be shown. If there are multiple faces in the frame, you can use the multi-controller to choose the face you'd like the camera to focus on. The final live view autofocus mode is quick mode. In this mode, a dedicated autofocus sensor is used to achieve focus, making autofocus faster than in other modes. In the quick mode, you'll be able to choose the AF area selection mode as well. To do this, press the AF point selection button. Now you can press the multi-function button to choose from six different AF area selection modes. Then you can use the main dial, multi-controller, or quick control dial to select the AF point. 
AF area selection modes are discussed in detail in Chapter 6 of this guide. After you've selected the AF area mode and AF point, press and hold the shutter button halfway down. The live view will disappear while the camera focuses. Once focus has been achieved, the live view scene will reappear and you can press the shutter button the rest of the way down to take the picture. In live view, you can make adjustments to the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO settings just like you would in normal shooting. If you'd like to see the effects of these settings on exposure, you can use the live view exposure simulation. To do this, enter the camera's fourth shooting menu tab and select exposure simulation. Here, choose enable. Now the live view scene will show the image brightness very close to what the final image will be. In the default live view screen, several important shooting settings are displayed on screen in the live view information display. Note that the items displayed will vary depending on the shooting mode you have selected. We'll be showing the information that is displayed when the camera is set in manual mode. Here you'll see the shutter speed, the aperture, the exposure level, the possible shots, the ISO setting, and the battery check. To show another information display, press the info button. In addition to the settings that were previously displayed, you'll see the shooting mode, the drive mode, the live view AF mode, the white balance setting, the picture style, the auto lighting optimizer, the card for recording playback, the image recording quality, and this icon indicates that exposure simulation is activated. Pressing the info button again will display a real-time histogram of the scene to help you monitor the overall exposure, and pressing the info button again will display the camera's electronic level. The electronic level will show whether the camera is level in the horizontal, vertical, and forward-backward positions. In addition to Live View, your 5D Mark III is also capable of shooting high-quality HD video. When shooting movies, you'll want to make sure that you're using a memory card that is capable of recording data fast enough for movies. For SD memory cards, you'll want to use a Speed Class 6 or faster. For compact flash memory cards, you'll want to use a Speed Class 10 or faster. If a slower memory card is used, the movie may not be properly recorded. While shooting movies or in live view, be sure that you do not point the lens directly into the sun as it may damage the camera's components. To access the camera's movie recording settings, first make sure the live view movie switch is set to movie. Then enter the camera's menu system and navigate to the fourth shooting tab. Here select the movie recording size option. Just like capturing still photos, you can set the camera to record video at different resolutions or recording sizes. The 5D Mark III has three resolution settings, 1920 by 1080, 1280 by 720, and 640 by 480. Each of these recording sizes have different frame rate and compression method options. Choosing one of the four options on the left, 1920 by 1080, will allow you to capture full HD video. Use this when you want the highest resolution video the camera is capable of recording. The top two options on the right side of the screen, 1280 by 720, are good options when you want to have high quality video, but it doesn't need to be full HD. The 1280 by 720 recording size could be used for family home movies or similar scenarios. The bottom option on the right side of the screen is 640 by 480. This is a lower resolution setting that is good for when you know you only want to use the movie for emailing or posting online. Choosing 24 frames per second will closely imitate the look that you would get if you were using a film video camera. 30 frames per second is more like what you would see on television. 60 frames per second is an option that's good for recording fast action video. In addition to the movie recording size and frame rate, there are two different compression options on the Mark III, IPB and All-I. The IPB compression method will compress multiple frames at once for more efficient recording and smaller file sizes. The All-I method will compress the frames one at a time for a movie file that is more suited for editing, but will also be a larger file size. The purpose or use of the finished video will help you decide which recording size, frame rate, and compression method to use. Keep in mind that the higher the resolution, the larger the file sizes will be. Now that we've discussed movie recording size options, let's talk about how to actually record movies with the Mark III. First, you'll need to select the shooting mode. If you choose Scene Intelligent Auto, Program AE or Bulb, the exposure will be set automatically. 
in shutter priority, aperture priority, and manual mode, you will have access to the same exposure controls for shutter speed, aperture, and ISO as you do in still shooting. Note that the shutter speeds available in movie recording will depend on the frame rate that you have selected. When shooting movies with moving subjects, it's a good idea to keep the shutter speed in the range of 1 30th of a second to 1 125th of a second. If you use a faster shutter speed, the motion will not appear as smooth. Make sure the live view movie switch is set to movie, then focus using the methods we've discussed in the live view shooting section of this guide, and to start recording, press the start stop button. While the movie is recording, the recording movie icon will be displayed at the top corner of the screen. If you'd like to shoot a still image while recording a movie, simply press the shutter button completely. The movie file will have a still moment that will last about one second at the time the still image was taken. To end recording, press the start stop button again. Your movie files will be saved as MOV files. To view a movie that you've recorded, press the playback button. And if necessary, use the quick control dial to find the movie you'd like to play. Press the set button to enter the playback mode and press the set button again to play the movie. You can control the volume of the sound that is played back with the main dial. With the 5D Mark III, you have the ability to edit movies within the movie playback. At the point that you'd like to have your clip start or end, press the set button to pause the movie. Then use the multi-controller to select edit from the playback mode options. Here you can select cut beginning or cut end. Press set. Now you can use the multi-controller to fast forward or rewind the movie. The portion of your movie that is shown in blue in the playback position bar is what will remain. Press set and select save. Here you can choose New File, Overwrite, or Cancel. We'll select New File, press Set, and select OK, and press Set again. Note that selecting Overwrite will erase the original movie and replace it with the edited version. To record sound in movie mode, the 5D Mark III has a built-in microphone, which will record sound automatically by default. If you'd like to change the microphone sensitivity or turn off sound recording, you can do this through the camera's menu system. Enter the camera's fourth shooting tab and select sound recording. Here you can select auto, manual, or disable. If you select manual, you can adjust the recording level to suit your needs. You can also choose whether you'd like the wind filter to be enabled. If you're shooting movies outdoors in windy conditions, enabling the filter will reduce the noise caused by wind. If there's no wind or you're shooting indoors, you'll want to disable the filter as the sound will be more natural than it would be if the filter was enabled. The 5D Mark III has a large LCD monitor where you can review images, adjust menu settings, and access the quick control screen. There are many options available for previewing images, and many of the camera's settings can be easily accessed through the quick control screen. Let's discuss how to use these camera features. First, for basic playback of your images on the camera's LCD monitor, simply press the playback button. Then you can use the quick control dial to scroll through the images. If you'd like to jump forward or back 10 images, you can rotate the main dial. You can change the function of the main dial in playback mode in the camera's playback menu. If you have a large number of images recorded on the memory card, you may find that it's faster to find the photos that you'd like to view if you display multiple photos on the screen at once. To do this, press the magnify button and the current image will be magnified. Then you can rotate the main dial counterclockwise to zoom out on the image and continue rotating the main dial to display the image index. You can display either four or nine images in the index depending on how many times you rotate the main dial. From here you can use the quick control dial, the multi-controller, or the main dial to scroll through the image thumbnails. To view an image full screen you can press the multi-controller or the set button. As discussed, you can also magnify images on the LCD monitor. This is especially useful when you want to check for good focus in detail areas of the photo. Press the magnify button to zoom the image. Here, you can rotate the main dial to increase or decrease the level of zoom. 
Then you can use the multi-controller to scroll top to bottom and side to side on the photo. If you rotate the quick control dial, you can scroll through the images on the card at the same level of magnification. If you're scrolling through photos in the camera's playback, you may find some images that you'd like to protect from being accidentally erased. To protect an image, enter the menu system and select the first playback menu. The first menu item is protect images. Here you can choose how to select the images you'd like to protect. We'll just choose select images. Now simply scroll through the images on the memory card and press the set button when you find one that you'd like to protect. A small key icon will appear at the top of the image. You can continue scrolling and protecting images in the same way. When you're finished, you can press the menu button to return to the menu or you can press the shutter button halfway to resume picture taking. If you find a photo that didn't turn out, you can delete it from your memory card by pressing the erase button. When the dialog appears, select erase and press set and the image will be removed from the memory card. Note that once an image is erased, it cannot be recovered. Another useful playback feature on the Mark III is image rating. With this feature, you can assign star ratings to images and movies on the memory card. In playback, select an image you'd like to apply a rating to and then press the rate button. Each time you press the rate button, the star rating will increase by one star up to five stars and then back to zero. There are several different playback screens on the 5D Mark III. Let's take a look at each of them now. The first and default playback screen is the no information screen and is simply a full screen display of the image. Additional information about the image can be viewed by pressing the info button. Each time the info button is pressed, a different set of information will be displayed. The next display option is the basic information display. Here you can see the shutter speed, aperture, the folder number and file number, and the memory card. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see the image number out of the total number of images. The next display is the shooting information display and can be viewed by pressing the info button. In addition to the information that was shown in the basic info display, you'll see the histogram of the image which gives a basic idea of the tone distribution of the image. If the histogram data is shifted toward the left side of the graph, the image will probably be dark or underexposed. If the histogram is shifted to the right side of the graph, the image will be too bright or overexposed. In most cases, a properly exposed photo will have data distributed over the whole graph. The histogram will help you have a basic idea of the overall exposure of your image when you're outdoors in bright sunlight and the photos are difficult to see on the LCD monitor. In the shooting information display, you'll also see the shooting mode, metering mode, the ISO setting, the white balance, the picture style, the image recording quality, the file size, the color space, and the date and time the image was recorded. Pressing the info button again will show the histogram display where you can see the brightness histogram as well as histograms for each of the red, green, and blue color channels. Here you can see the areas in any of the individual channels that are shifted to the left showing the dark tones in that channel or shifted to the right showing the lighter tones in that color channel. If any of the channels have distribution that is shifted too far to the right, that color channel will be oversaturated and show little or no detail. If any of the channels have distribution that is shifted too far to the left, that channel will lack color information. In the camera's playback mode, you can press the quick control button to display several quick control playback options. You can use the multi-controller to navigate through the options and you can use the quick control dial to make selections. First, there is the Protect Images option, which allows you to quickly protect the currently displayed image. The Rotate Image option will allow you to rotate the image by 90 degrees in each direction. The Rating option is another way to apply ratings to your images. The next option is the Raw Image Processing. This will allow you to create a JPEG copy of your raw image. You can choose Disable or No Processing, use Shot Settings, which will simply create a JPEG using the settings that were used when the photo was taken, or you can select Customize Raw Processing, which will allow you to make adjustments to a variety of settings before you save a JPEG copy of the image. You can make changes to the brightness adjustment, the image quality, the white balance, the color space, the picture style, the peripheral illumination correction, 
This setting corrects vignetting that can be caused by certain lenses. You can also adjust the auto lighting optimizer, the distortion correction, the high ISO noise reduction, and the chromatic aberration correction. To make changes to any of these options, press set and use the multi-controller or quick control dial to make your selections. When you're satisfied with your changes, select save and OK. The JPEG copy will be saved to the memory card. The next option in the Quick Control Playback is the Resize option, where you can save a resized copy of the image to the memory card. You can choose from options ranging from 9.8 megapixels and 0.3 megapixels. The next option, Highlight Alert, will allow you to have the camera warn you if certain areas of your photo are overexposed. In this playback display, areas that are very overexposed and have lost detail and highlights will blink in black. The AF point display option will allow you to see which AF point was used when the photo was taken. And the image jump option will allow you to select the method that you'd like the camera to use for the image jump feature. You can choose to have the camera jump 1, 10, or 100 images. And you can also choose to display images by date, by folder, movies only, still images only, or by rating. One other useful playback feature on the 5D Mark III is the two-image display, where you can see two images side-by-side -side on the LCD monitor. To use this feature, simply press the comparative playback button while in the playback mode. Press set to switch the blue frame between the two images, and rotate the quick control dial to scroll through images in that frame. In the comparative playback, you can view several different information displays by pressing the info button. To magnify an image, press the magnify button and rotate the main dial. To match the magnification setting for the compared image, press set and then press the quick control button. To temporarily view a full screen display of the image that is selected in the blue frame, press and hold the playback button. In the comparative display, you can also apply ratings to or erase the image that is selected within the blue frame. Let's discuss the focus modes that are available on the 5D Mark III. When you're choosing the focus mode, the main thing you'll want to think about is whether or not the subject is in motion. The Canon 5D Mark III has a sophisticated autofocus system with a variety of autofocus modes and AF area selection modes that when used well together will help you get great focus regardless of what type of subject you're photographing. Understanding how all of the modes and areas work together might seem a little confusing, but this chapter of the guide will help you know when to use each autofocus mode as well as autofocus area mode. Let's first discuss the camera's three autofocus modes, one shot, AI focus, or AI servo. To choose an autofocus mode on the 5D Mark III, press the AF button and then rotate the main dial while watching the LCD panel. Another way to select the AF mode on the Mark III is through the Quick Control screen. Press the Quick Control button and use the multi-controller to navigate to the AF mode setting. Here you can use the Quick Control dial to scroll through the options. The first focus mode is one shot and is best suited for stationary subjects. Choose this mode when you're photographing objects or when you're doing portrait work with an older child or adult. When focus is achieved, the AF point which achieved focus will flash in red and the focus confirmation light in the viewfinder will also light. The AI servo AF mode is best for shooting moving subjects and is for use when the focusing distance keeps changing. Use this mode when you're photographing sporting events, small children or animals. When you hold the shutter button halfway, the subject will be focused continuously. When the AF point selection is automatic, the camera first uses the center AF point to focus. During autofocusing, if the subject moves away from the center AF point, focus tracking continues as long as the subject is covered by another AF point. In the AI focus mode, the focus mode automatically switches from one shot AF to AI servo if the still subject starts moving. After the subject is focused in the one shot AF mode, if the subject starts moving, the camera will detect the movement and will change the AF mode automatically to AI servo. The 5D Mark III has a great feature for photographing moving subjects with the AI servo mode called the AF configuration tool. 
With this tool, you can select an AI Servo AF option based on the characteristics of the moving subject you're photographing. To access the AF configuration tool, press the menu button and navigate to the first AF menu. Here, you'll see the six different cases or characteristics to choose from. Case 1 is a good general purpose option for any moving subject. Case 2 will continue to track a moving subject regardless of obstacles. This is a good setting to choose for tennis players, swimmers, skiers, or similar subjects. Case 3 will instantly focus on a subject entering the AF points. This would be a good setting to choose if you're photographing the starting line of a race, for example. Case 4 is a good setting to choose if you're taking pictures of subjects that accelerate or decelerate quickly, such as motorsports or basketball players. Case 5 is a good setting to choose for subjects that move unpredictably, like figure skaters. And Case 6 is a good mode to choose for subjects that move unpredictably and change speed. Examples of these types of subjects would be gymnasts or dancers. Before we begin discussing the autofocus area selection modes, please note that autofocus modes and autofocus area selection modes are different settings but function together. Understanding how they work together will help your images have great focus. There are six basic AF area selection modes. Single point AF, spot AF, four AF point expansion, eight AF point expansion, zone AF, and auto AF point selection. To choose the AF area selection mode, press the AF point selection button. Then while looking through the viewfinder, press the multifunction button. Each time you press the multifunction button, the AF area selection mode will change. Once you have selected the AF area selection mode, you'll need to select the AF point. To do this, press the AF point selection button to activate the AF points. Now you can use the multi controller to select the AF point or you can use the main dial and quick control dial. Rotating the main dial will scroll horizontally through the AF points and rotating the quick control dial will scroll vertically through the AF points. The single point AF mode is great for when you want to manually select and focus on a small area such as the subject's eye or another small object. With this mode you'll select one of the camera's 61 focus points that you'd like to use. The single point spot AF mode is similar to the single point AF mode except that the focus point area is even smaller. This is great for pinpoint focus of overlapping subjects such as animals in cages. In this mode you will manually select the exact focus point you'd like the camera to use for focus. The next two AF area selection modes are the AF point expansion modes. The AF point expansion mode will use a manually selected focus point plus four adjacent AF points to focus the image. You'll select the primary focus point and the camera will use the four additional focus points if the subject does not have enough detail to use the selected focus point. With the AF point expansion surrounding points mode, the camera will use eight focus points that surround the manually selected focus point. These modes are good to use for moving subjects or subjects that have little detail or texture. With the zone AF mode, the 61 AF points are divided into nine sections or zones. All of the points in the selected zones are used for autofocus, and the camera will focus on the nearest subject within the selected zone. This is a good mode to use for moving subjects, but since the camera automatically focuses on the nearest subject, it may be more difficult to focus on a very specific subject. The last AF area selection mode is Auto AF Point Selection. In this mode, all 61 AF points will be used for autofocus. The way that this mode works depends on the AF mode that you have selected. If you're using one-shot AF, the camera will use the AF point that is over the nearest subject. If you're using AI Servo AF, you'll select the starting AF point and if the subject moves away from that point, the camera will automatically use another AF point to track the subject. Now that we've discussed the camera's autofocus modes and autofocus area modes separately, let's talk about how all of the autofocus functions could work together in specific shooting scenarios. First, we'll use a sporting event, like a football game, for example. Subjects in this type of scenario will be in motion, so you'll want to select the AI Servo focus mode. 
If in one shot AF mode, the camera would not continue to focus on the subject as the shutter button was pressed halfway down. After the AF mode is set to AI servo, either the AF point expansion or zone AF would be good choices for the autofocus area mode. The speed and predictability of the subjects would determine which AF area mode would be the better choice. If the subjects are somewhat predictable, the AF point expansion would be a better choice. If the subjects are less predictable, you would probably want to select the zone AF. So when you're at a sporting event like a football game, you'll probably want to choose AI servo AF for your focus mode. And depending on the level of action in the game, either AF point expansion or zone AF area mode. Now let's discuss a portrait scenario. Assuming that you are photographing an older child or adult, the subject will be stationary. So a good AF mode to use would be the one-shot AF. For the autofocus area mode, you could choose the single point AF. For older subjects with less motion, the single point AF would be the best way to assure the focus was exactly where you intended it. But if the subject was a younger child, there may not be time to select the individual focus point, so the auto area AF might be a better option. So when you're doing portrait work for older children or adults, using one-shot AF combined with single point AF will give you the most accurate results. When you're photographing younger children, you may want to choose the AI focus combined with the auto area AF to get good focus. The last of the focusing modes is the manual focus or MF mode. To use the camera's manual focus, simply switch the focus mode switch on the lens to MF. This gives you the control to manually focus on any subject through the viewfinder using the focus ring. Sometimes a photo may have poor focus, but it's not related to the camera's focus mode or focus area mode. Camera shake happens when the camera moves while the shutter is open, exposing the image sensor. Always try to steady the camera. Holding it with two hands and pressing the viewfinder gently against your face will help. You can also lean against something or use a tripod, a monopod, or even a bean bag to steady the camera. You can also reduce the effect of camera shake by selecting a fast shutter speed. This reduces the amount of time the image sensor is exposed to shaky conditions. A helpful rule of thumb is to set your shutter speed to one over the focal length. Confusing? Let me explain. If the focal length of your lens is 300 millimeters, for example, you should set your shutter speed to at least 1 300th of a second. If the focal length is 30 millimeters, you might get by by using a shutter speed as low as 1 30th of a second. Let's take a look at the 5D Mark III's sophisticated menu system. To access the menu, simply press the menu button. There are five different menus, each with several tabs. The menus include Shooting, AF, Playback, Setup, Custom Functions, and My Menu. First, let's take a look at the shooting menu items. The first item in the first tab is Image Quality, where you can select the RAW and JPEG image quality and size settings. Next, there is Image Review. This is where you can select the length of time you'd like the image to be displayed on the LCD monitor immediately after it's taken. The beep menu item will allow you to enable or disable the beep that sounds when the camera uses autofocus. Next, there is shutter release without card. This item will allow you to choose whether you'd like to be able to take pictures without a memory card in the camera. The Lens Aberration Correction menu item will allow you to apply correction for chromatic aberration as well as peripheral illumination or a vignette effect in camera. Next, there is External Speed Light Control. When you have an optional external Canon speed light flash attached to the camera, this menu item will allow you to make adjustments to many settings for the flash. The mirror lockup option allows you to lock the mirror in the up position to reduce the effects of camera shake at very slow shutter speeds. The second shooting tab begins with exposure compensation auto exposure bracketing. With this menu item, you can set the increment or stop for the exposure compensation and exposure bracketing. Next, there is the ISO speed settings. This menu item will allow you to set the ISO speed, range, auto ISO range, and the minimum shutter speed when auto ISO is used. Next, there is the auto lighting optimizer setting. You can choose from off, 
low, standard, and high. If you press the info button, you can disable the auto lighting optimizer when the camera is in manual mode. Next, there is the white balance menu item where you can select the white balance setting. The custom white balance is where you can set the custom white balance. Next, there is the white balance shift bracket. With this option, you can use the multi controller to fine tune the white balance setting. And you can set the amount of variation in color for white balance bracketed shots. Next, there is the color space option. Your camera has two color space options. Some photographers prefer the sRGB mode as it requires less processing later. Other photographers prefer the Adobe RGB mode as this mode has a wider range of colors, making it a preferred option for images that will be extensively processed on the computer. The third shooting menu begins with the picture style setting, where you can select and modify a picture style. The next two options, long exposure noise reduction and high ISO noise reduction, will allow you to enable noise reduction for long exposures as well as set the level of noise reduction for images taken at high ISO settings. Next, there is highlight tone priority, which you can set to enable or disable. We'll discuss highlight tone priority in greater detail in chapter 8 of this guide. Dust delete data is next. With this option, you can take a photo to use in conjunction with software to remove dust spots automatically from photos when post-processing. The multiple exposure menu item is where you can set up the camera to take multiple exposure photos. You can set the exposure control, the number of exposures, whether to save the final image or all images used to create the multiple exposure, and whether you'd like to only capture one multiple exposure image or continue capturing multiple exposure images until you disable the feature. The HDR mode menu item is where you can set up the camera to capture HDR images. We'll discuss more about HDR images in chapter 8 of this guide. The fourth shooting menu begins with live view shooting, which you can set to enable or disable. The AF mode menu item is where you can set the AF mode for live view. You can select live mode, live mode with face detection, or quick mode. Under grid display, you can select a framing grid to be displayed on the LCD monitor during live view to assist in composition and to check for tilted horizon lines. Next, there is the aspect ratio setting. Here you can choose the aspect ratio for images to be saved in. Note that raw images will always be saved at the 3-2 aspect ratio. Exposure simulation is next. This setting will allow you to display and simulate the brightness of what the final image exposure will be. Next, there is silent live view shooting with two modes. In mode one, shooting is quieter than in normal live view. In mode two, you can press and hold the shutter button after the photo has been taken to further minimize sound. When you release the shutter button to the halfway position, normal picture taking will resume. The last menu item in the fourth shooting menu is metering timer. With this option, you can change how long the exposure setting, the auto exposure lock time, is displayed. Now let's take a look at the Mark III's AF menus with five tabs. The first AF menu has six different cases that will allow you to quickly and easily fine tune the AI servo AF settings for your scenario. Each of these cases are discussed in greater detail in chapter six of this guide. The second AF menu begins with AI Servo First Image Priority. With this setting, you can set how much priority to be given to focus versus releasing the shutter when the shutter button is pressed. The AI Servo Second Image Priority setting allows you to choose whether you'd like shooting speed or focus to be the priority when the shutter button is pressed. When continuous shooting, you can select speed to have the camera continuously take pictures regardless of whether focus has been achieved. The third AF menu begins with USM Lens Electronic MF. With this option, you can choose whether or not to use the electronic focusing ring that is available on certain lenses. Next, there is an AF Assist Beam Firing, which will allow you to enable or disable an optional speed lights AF Assist Beam in low light conditions. Next, there is the one-shot AF release priority. 
Just like the AI servo release priority, you can choose whether or not to allow the camera to take the picture if focus has not been achieved. The fourth AF menu begins with lens drive when AF impossible. This allows you to choose whether you'd like the lens to keep searching or stop searching when focus cannot be achieved. Next, there is selectable AF point, which allows you to choose how many of the 61 AF points you'd like to use. The next option is select AF area selection mode. Here you can enable or disable any of the AF area selection modes. Note that single point AF cannot be disabled. Next, there is AF Area Selection Method. You can choose to select the AF area using the multifunction button, or you can select the main dial. With the Orientation Linked AF Point menu item, you can choose whether to use the same AF point in both horizontal and vertical orientations, or you can choose to use a separate AF point for each. The fifth AF menu begins with Manual AF Point Selection Pattern where you can choose the method for scrolling when selecting an AF point. You can choose to have the camera stop at the outer edge, or you can have the camera start at the opposite AF point when you keep scrolling. Under AF point display during focus, you can choose how you'd like the AF points to be shown in the viewfinder when you're selecting the AF point or area, and when the camera is focusing. Next, there is viewfinder display illumination. This is where you can choose whether or not to have the focus point shown in red when focus has been achieved. The autofocus micro adjustment menu will allow you to fine tune the AF's point of focus. Note that this menu item is usually not necessary and using it may prevent correct focus from being achieved. Let's take a look at the playback menus now. The first three menu items in the first playback menu are protect, rotate, and erase images where you can select the methods for protecting, rotating, and erasing images. Next, there is the Print Order option, which will allow you to choose the method for printing images directly from the camera when you're using a compatible printer. Next, there is Image Copy, which will allow you to copy images between the camera's memory cards. Next, there is Raw Image Processing, which will allow you to make adjustments to a raw image and save a JPEG copy to the memory card. The second playback menu starts with the resize option, where you can save a smaller version of an image as a JPEG to the memory card. The rating menu allows you to assign a star rating of 1 through 5 to your images. Under slideshow, you can set up the camera to display a slideshow of the images. This is a useful tool when the camera is connected to a TV. The next menu item, Image Transfer, will allow you to select which images you'd like to transfer to your computer. Next, there is Image Jump, where you can choose the method for the camera's image jump feature. The third playback menu starts with the Highlight Alert option, where you can choose to have the camera warn you when areas of the image are too bright and have lost detail. The AF point display setting will allow you to choose whether or not you'd like the AF point that achieved focus to be displayed on the image during playback. Next, there is Playback Grid, which will allow you to display a framing grid over images in playback. Under Histogram Display, you can choose to have either the Brightness Histogram or the RGB Histogram displayed in image playback. With Movie Play Count, you can choose to display either the recording time or the time code during movie playback. Under Magnification, you can choose the level and method of magnification for images in playback. And Control over HDMI will allow you to use a compatible TV's remote to control playback operations when the camera is connected via an HDMI cable. Now let's take a look at the camera's setup menu. First, there is Record Function Card Folder Selection. This menu item allows you to choose the method for how images are saved to the two memory cards. Next, there is File Numbering, which allows you to choose how the camera names the image and movie files. Under File Name, you can customize the image file names with your own prefix. The Auto Rotate menu item will allow you to choose whether or not you'd like vertical images to be automatically rotated in playback and on the computer. Format Card will allow you to format the memory cards. 
The second setup menu starts with Auto Power Off, which allows you to choose how long the camera should wait before going into sleep mode when it's not in use. LCD brightness will allow you to adjust the LCD monitor brightness. Next, there is date, time, zone, and language. The viewfinder grid display setting will allow you to show a framing grid to assist with composition in the viewfinder. GPS device settings allow you to set up the camera for use with an optional GPS unit. The third setup menu begins with Video System, where you can select NTSC or PAL. If you're in the United States, you'll want to select NTSC. Next, there is Battery Info, where you can view information about the battery life. Sensor Cleaning will allow you to automatically clean the image sensor. The Info and Rate button menu items will allow you to customize the functions of those buttons. The fourth setup menu begins with Custom Shooting Mode, which is where you can register one of the camera's three custom shooting modes. Next, there is Clear All Camera Settings, which allows you to reset the camera to factory default. You can use the Copyright Information setting to enter your copyright information to be saved to the metadata for each image and the firmware version will allow you to update the camera's firmware. Now let's take a look at the Mark III's Custom Functions menu. The first two menu items in the first menu are Exposure Level and ISO Speed Increments, where you can choose the stop increments for the Exposure Level and ISO Speed. Next, there is Bracketing Auto Cancel, which will allow you to choose whether to have the bracketing setting canceled automatically when the camera is powered off. Under Bracketing Sequence, you can set the order for bracketed images to be taken. Number of bracketed shots allows you to choose 3, 2, 5, or 7 shots when using exposure or white balance bracketing. The Safety Shift menu item will allow you to set the camera to automatically change the exposure settings in certain shooting modes when the image is going to be very overexposed. The second custom functions menu begins with Warnings in Viewfinder, which will allow you to choose which items you'd like the camera to warn you about in the viewfinder. Next, there is Live View Shooting Area Display. This option allows you to choose whether you'd like the Live View Display to be masked or outlined when shooting at different aspect ratios. The next menu item, Dial Direction During Shutter, Aperture Priority, allows you to set the direction for the main dial when setting the shutter speed and aperture. Next, there is the multifunction lock setting, where you can choose which controls to lock when the lock switch is set to lock. The next menu item is Custom Controls, where you can customize the functions of many of the camera's buttons and dials. The third Custom Functions menu begins with Add Cropping Information. This will allow you to set the camera to display vertical lines for the aspect ratio you select. The default Erase option menu will allow you to select whether Cancel or Erase is selected by default when you press the Erase button in playback mode. The final Custom Functions menu has only one menu item, Clear All Custom Functions. This will allow you to set all of the custom functions back to factory default. The last menu item on the 5D Mark III is My Menu. With this menu, you can register any of your frequently accessed menu items for quick access. To register a menu item to My Menu, select My Menu Settings. Here, choose Register to My Menu. Now, scroll through the items and press Set to select the one you'd like to register, and select OK. You can continue registering items to My Menu in the same way. When you're finished registering items to My Menu, press the Menu button twice to return to the top menu in My Menu. The items that you registered will be listed. Let's discuss white balance. It's important to understand that the quality of your pictures is affected by the color of the surrounding light and how the camera's electronics process that light. Compensating for varying light conditions is referred to as setting the white balance. Most light looks white to an untrained eye, but it can be composed of a range of different colors. The color of sunlight is different in daylight, in the shade, or in cloudy conditions. Daylight, for example, is fairly blue, and fluorescent light is fairly green. 
If your camera is set to shoot in daylight, but you're shooting in a setting with fluorescent light, your image will look overly red. Proper camera white balance takes into account the color temperature of a light source, which refers to the relative warmth or coolness of white light. Human eyes are very good at judging what is white under different light sources. However, digital cameras often have difficulty determining auto white balance. Incorrect white balance can create unattractive blue, orange, or even green colors in your photos. The white balance scale is expressed in measurements of Kelvin. The higher color temperatures, measured in the area of 5600 Kelvin to 7500 Kelvin, represent situations like a sunlit or a cloudy day. These shooting situations have a greater amount of blue tones and a lesser amount of red tones. Lower color temperature situations are measured in the area of 3200 Kelvin down to 1900 Kelvin and are found in lighting situations like standard lighting from a tungsten light bulb or candlelight. These types of shooting situations are found on the lower end of the spectrum and produce a greater amount of red tones and a lesser amount of blue tones. Once you get acquainted with the camera's white balance settings, you can try setting your own by using the camera's custom white balance feature. To use this tool effectively, you'll want to be familiar with the color temperature that is most effective for your shooting situation. Again, most light looks white to an untrained eye. Setting your white balance will help your pictures have the proper coloring. If natural looking colors cannot be obtained with auto white balance, you can select one of the other white balance settings to suit the respective light source. To access the white balance settings, press the white balance button and rotate the quick control dial while watching the LCD panel. You can also set the white balance in the quick control screen. Press the quick control button and use the multi controller to navigate to white balance setting. Press set to view the options. The first option is auto white balance. With this setting, the camera will attempt to automatically adjust the color temperature. The next white balance setting is daylight. Daylight is a great setting for taking pictures in the sunlight. This setting is marked with a sun icon. Use the shade setting when you're taking pictures in the shade. It reduces the bluish tones in a picture. This setting is marked by an icon of a house with shade. Use the cloudy setting when taking pictures on days that are overcast. This is marked with a cloud icon. The next white balance setting is tungsten light. This is a good setting to use when taking pictures under common light bulbs. It reduces the reddish tones in a picture. This setting is marked with a light bulb icon. The white fluorescent light setting is great for taking pictures under common fluorescent lighting. The next setting is the flash setting. Use this setting when you're using an external flash unit. The next icon is the custom white balance option. Use this setting when you want to manually set the white balance for a specific light source for the best accuracy. The next white balance setting is color temperature and is marked with a K icon. Use this setting when you know the color temperature of the lighting you're shooting under. Rotate the main dial to select the color temperature. Let's walk through setting a custom white balance on the Mark III. First, you'll need to take a picture of a plain white or gray object in the lighting that you're shooting under. An 18% gray card, which can be purchased at your local camera store, will give you the most accurate results. You can also use a white card, an object like a shirt, or a piece of paper to achieve good results. Now you'll need to set that image as the custom white balance reference. This is done in the menu system under the second shooting menu. Here, select custom white balance and select the photo of the white or gray object. Press set and select OK. Then press set again to confirm the custom white balance setting. With the Mark III, you can fine tune any of the white balance settings to give the same effect that you would get from a color compensating filter. To do this, enter the camera's second shooting menu and select white balance shift. Now you can use the multi controller to position the cursor in the grid. Placing the cursor toward the A will increase the amber in the image. Placing the cursor toward the G will increase the green in the image. Placing the cursor toward the B will increase the blue in the image. And placing the cursor toward the M will increase the magenta in the image. In addition to white balance, there are some other features on your 5D Mark III that can improve the quality of your images. Picture styles, auto lighting optimizer, highlight tone priority, and HDR. 
Picture styles are an intuitive way for you to tell the camera what levels of sharpness, contrast, saturation, and color tone you'd like for your specific shooting scenario. The camera has seven different preset picture styles, and you can make adjustments to settings in each of them. To access the picture styles, press the Creative Photo button. Press Set to access the picture styles. Use the Quick Control Dial or Multi Controller to select a picture style. First, there is Auto Picture Style. This is a good general use picture style. The camera will automatically adjust color tone to fit the scene you're photographing. This is a good picture style for photos of greenery, nature, outdoor, and sunset scenes. The standard picture style is also a good general use picture style, and it's suitable for most scenes. Images taken with this picture style will look vivid, sharp, and crisp. The portrait picture style is great for portraits, particularly close-ups. It offers pleasant skin tones and makes the image appear a little softer. The landscape picture style is good for taking pictures of scenery outdoors. This picture style makes the greens and blues in the image more vivid. The neutral picture style is a good setting to choose if you wish to process your images with your computer. Colors in this picture style are natural and subdued. The faithful picture style is also a good setting to choose if you're processing images with your computer. When shooting under normal daylight, the color is adjusted to match the subject's color. The image is overall dull and subdued. The monochrome picture style is useful when you would like to take black and white photographs. Note, unless you're shooting in RAW, images taken in this setting cannot be converted to color later. All of these picture styles are fully customizable. Select a picture style that you'd like to customize and press the Info button. You can make changes to the sharpness, contrast, saturation, and color tone. Select a parameter you'd like to make adjustments to and press Set. Now use the Multi Controller or Quick Control Dial to adjust the setting. Press Set to confirm the adjustment or press the Menu button to cancel. In addition to the seven preset picture styles, there are also three user-defined picture style options. These options allow you to select and adjust a picture style to your liking and save it for future use. Registering a user-defined picture style is very similar to customizing a picture style, but with a few minor changes. First, select the user-defined picture style and press the Info button. Choose a base picture style to customize using the multi-controller. Now, use the Set button and the Quick Control Dial to make adjustments to any of the parameters when you're finished, press Menu to save changes as a user-defined picture style. Now let's discuss the Mark III's Auto Lighting Optimizer. With this feature, you can improve contrast and detail in shadow areas of your photo automatically. You can access the Auto Lighting Optimizer in the Quick Control screen. Press the Quick Control button and select the Auto Lighting Optimizer setting. Here you can select Disable, Low, Standard, or High. Images may have increased noise with this feature depending on the scenario. Also, if you're using exposure compensation to darken the image while the auto lighting optimizer is active, the exposure compensation may not work as intended. And you may need to disable the auto lighting optimizer feature. Another feature that is similar to the auto lighting optimizer is the highlight tone priority. With this feature, you can retain detail in highlight areas of your photos. To enable this feature, go to the camera's third shooting menu and select Highlight Tone Priority. Here, select Enable. Another feature on the 5D Mark III is HDR, which will allow you to capture artistic HDR photos in camera. HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. It's a technique that is used in photography to create captivating photos of dramatically lit subjects. The HDR effect is created when three differently exposed images are combined to create a single photo that shows a super realistic range of shadows and highlights. To capture an HDR photo, press the Creative Photo button and select HDR. Here you will see several options. First, there is the Dynamic Range setting, which will determine the level of variation in exposure between the shots that will be combined to make the final image. You can choose Auto, one, two, or three exposure steps. Choosing one will combine three images with slight variation in exposure, and choosing three will combine images with more dramatic differences in exposure. Next, there is the effect setting. 
you can choose from natural, art standard, art vivid, art bold, and art embossed. The natural setting will preserve a wide range of tones that would otherwise be lost. Art standard will preserve more detail than natural, but the image will also have less contrast and appear flatter. Subjects in images taken with art standard will have outlines around their edges. The art vivid setting will create an HDR image with more saturated colors than the art standard setting and will create a graphic effect. The art bold setting will create an image that is the most saturated and will make the subject pop with the look of an oil painting. The last setting, Art Embossed, will capture an image with low saturation and contrast. Overall, the image will appear flat and old, but with bright or dark outlines at the subject's edges. The next setting you'll need to select in the HDR options is Continuous HDR. You can choose to have only one shot be HDR, or you can choose to have every shot be HDR. Next, there is Auto Image Align, which will automatically align the three images that will be combined to create the final HDR image. If you're using a tripod, you'll want to set this to Disable. If you're hand-holding the camera, you'll want to choose Enable. The last option to adjust is Save Source Images. If you select All Images, the camera will save all of the photos that were used to create the HDR image as separate files. If you select HDR Image Only, the camera will only save the final HDR image to the memory card. When you're finished making your selection, simply take the picture as you normally would. The camera will take three shots at high speed and combine them to create the HDR image. We hope you've enjoyed learning more about your Canon 5D Mark III. We know this new information will give you enough confidence and know-how to get the most out of your camera. Remember, you can refer back to any section of this guide at any time. Just select the topics you want to review from the main menu or the table of contents. Watch for more Quick Pro guides on newly released cameras. Thanks for watching.